My sister was dating a guy and they moved in together and everything was going fine. He was really kind to her, he was kind to me, he was kind to our entire family. And then he got fired from his job and instead of looking for another job, he actually went ahead and just started mooching off my sister. Maybe you know somebody like this. And he would lay on the couch and not do anything. And at first it was just a few days, but then it became weeks and then months and eventually years. And when you'd walk into their trailer, uh, he didn't clean anything up. He didn't feed. He didn't do anything. He, he did nothing to provide any help. And then he started to manipulate my sister in some horrible ways and my parents as well and got money from them. But that was not the worst of it. Later on, we found out that he actually started emotionally abusing her. And then what put me to the edge was that he put his hands on my sister and he started to physically cause bruises and pain. Now, I know we're not supposed to hate people. I know that in the Christian faith, we're supposed to, to not do that. But I hated this guy. And I hated him with a passion. The next five weeks, we're going to be talking about things that take us hostage. Areas of our life, emotions in our life, that if not controlled, can make us a hostage. And today, I want to talk about one of them that I think probably affects all of us in different ways. And that is the hostage of bitterness. You know, if you're not careful... Bitterness can poison you and it can poison the people around you. And you will become a hostage to it. Hebrews chapter 12, which is in the New Testament, the second half of the Bible, uh, the writer says this, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls or uh, falls short of the grace of God and that what? What's the bold part say? It says, no bitter root grows up. No bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See to it that no bitter root grows up and consumes then your heart. Now, today, we're going to uh, kind of lay a foundation at the beginning by giving you two biblical thoughts when it comes to this whole area of bitterness. And uh, the first thought is this, and if you're on the stream, get ready to put this down. For those of you in the auditorium, get ready to write it. But here it is. Here's the first biblical thought on bitterness. Bitterness itself has a dangerous root. Bitterness has a dangerous root. Again, verse 15 says this, See to it that no what? Bitter root grows up. Now how does a bitter root start? Well, it starts with a little seed, and a bitter root then grows in the seed of a heart that hasn't dealt with the hurt properly. This hurt comes and it's not dealt with properly and then pretty soon this bitterness grows and grows and grows. Someone betrays you. Maybe you've been there before. Someone betrays you. And instead of handling it God's way, you just kind of become absorbed with the hurt and you Store it up in your heart and the root grows deeper and deeper. Now, Scripture says this, love keeps no record of wrong. So all of you on the stream, everyone here in the auditorium, let's read this out loud together. What's it say again? Love keeps no record of wrong. If someone hurts you, if there's someone that you love, you forgive them. You let them off the hook. You let them go. Love keeps no record of wrong. Bitterness keeps a detailed record, doesn't it? 
Bitterness reminds you all the time of every single thing that person has ever done. And you put all of that down and you have a detailed record of that wrong. I mean, so-and-so did that to me and I can't believe she acted like that. And that's it. I am bitter towards her. Bitter. Or we'll do something like this. Well, you know what? I just wish I would have said what I wanted to say. When she said that, oh, it made me so mad. And I wish I was going to say that. And what happens is, is that bitterness grows up in such a way that it begins to consume us. And it can cause all kinds of destruction. So bitterness produces a dangerous root. And then secondly, bitterness produces a poisonous fruit. It's not just a bitter root, but then it actually produces something that is a poisonous fruit. Out of the dangerous root of bitterness, what starts to exude from us becomes something deeper like anger and rage and then hatred. And it all stemmed out of the beginning of bitterness and it can poison the relationships that are around us. In fact, I like the way that the New uh, Living Translation translates it in verse 15. It says this, Whoever the bitter root springs, or whenever the bitter root springs up, many people are what? What's it say? Corrupted by its poison. You actually become corrupted by it. I bet you've experienced this before. Have you ever noticed this? Maybe you're at work. And whether you work in an office or you work on a factory floor or you work in a store, all of a sudden someone comes in and they're just bitter. And they're bitter about something and they come in and they start spreading that bitterness around. And pretty soon everybody around it affects the entire workplace because of that person's bitter spirit. It happens the same way with families. You can be at a family gathering and all of a sudden somebody remembers something that somebody did at the last uh, Christmas or Thanksgiving thing and they get bitter and then pretty soon the whole family is affected by the bitterness of one person and the unity and the love that's in the family becomes disintegrated. Now the question becomes, how can I know if a person is bitter? Or better yet, how can you know when you might be falling into bitterness yourself. Well, what I'd like to do is just share with you kind of rapid fire style, five different qualities of a bitter person. And what I want you to do is to see if you are in any of these yourself. Are you on the list? Here's the first quality of a bitter person that tends to be that they tend to justify their bitterness. They tend to justify their bitterness. They think, okay, now after what that person did to me, I sure hope that there is some justice coming this way to them. And I have a right, I have a right to be angry at them, to be frustrated. I have a right to go off on them. I can even plot a little revenge toward them because of what they did to me. I mean, after all, folks, they deserve it for what they did to me. And many of us will become bitter. And then we start justifying why. Because this is what they did. And this is the reason why I can be bitter. And they justify it. The second quality of a bitter person is that they tend to become overly critical. They tend to become overly critical. You know, if you have bitterness towards a person, what happens is you cannot objectively kind of look at them again. You always see them in a different way. For example, let's say that there is a woman in your workplace that you're bitter towards and they simply walk into the office and they walk in and they walk in like this, but you think they walk in like this. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're like, why are they walking like that? Why do they got such an attitude? Why do they have to flaunt it around? Why do they have to act like they have it all together in some? Like, why do they have to act like they're better than me? Or you might see this in the office workplace sometimes with a guy. A guy walks into a room, he gives this great presentation, but you're bitter towards him for some reason. And he gives this great presentation. And then you're like, why does he think he's so smart? Why does he got to be smarter than everybody? Why is he so cocky? I just don't understand that. And you do this because you're better 
and you become overly critical for them. The third quality of a bitter person is this, that they will secretly celebrate the misfortunes of others. They secretly celebrate the misfortunes of others. You see, if I'm bitter at you, if I'm bitter towards you in some way, and something bad happens to you, what happens is I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. That's what they deserve. God's just evening the score right now. I mean, you reap what you sow. And so whatever you did, it deserves you right. You just kind of celebrate their misfortunes. I don't know if you've ever had this experience before. You're driving in the, in the right lane. Everything's going fine. And then somebody goes by you 90 miles an hour. And that happens, you go, oh, I'm just angry and start getting bitter. And then 10 miles later, you see these lights going on and this car is pulled over. And you're like, serves you right, serves you right. And you start thinking, oh yeah, I hope something even worse happens. I hope their tire gets flat, you know. You, you just start secretly celebrating their misfortunes. A fourth quality of a bitter person is this, that they tend to write off entire groups of people. One person hurts them or two people hurt them and then they write off the whole group. I know some women who will become hurt by a man and then all of a sudden they're like, I'm done with all men. I hate all men. All men are the same. All men are bad. And I see it happening, happening the other way. A woman uh, cheats on uh, a man and then all of a sudden a, a man will say, you know what? All women are wrong. They can't be trusted. They're all cheaters. Every single one of them. You can't trust a single woman. None of them are faithful. I see it with political parties. People will look at one person or two people and they're like, ah, Democrats, they are a bunch of... Okay, I won't say what some people say. Blankety blank blank. Or, or Republicans, oh, I can't believe they're even Christians when they act like that. Duh, duh. And then people will just write off entire groups of people. And then lastly, bitter people, they struggle to see bitterness in the mirror. They struggle to see bitterness in the mirror. Some of you right now are thinking to yourself, man, I sure wish so-and-so was right here today. I wish that person was here. I wish that person was on the stream right now. Maybe I'll take the stream and I'll send a link to them because they need to know about this. And, uh, and what's happening though, folks, there's probably some people around you that are thinking right now in their head, like, I hope they're listening really well right now. Yeah. Because many times we see bitterness in other people. We just don't see it in ourselves. And we'll have a tendency then to not see it, but the other people around us, the people that we're closest to, they see it very easily. And so, at the end of the celebration, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to think about one person that you're bitter towards. And for you to write their name down and to begin a process of maybe taking some steps to see what you can do with that bitterness. For some of you, maybe it's your dad. Your dad right now has created a lot of issues for your life. Maybe he was abusive. Maybe he wasn't good to your mom. Maybe he left you at a very young age. Maybe for others of you, it's your mom. And your mom just drank too much, or your mom was violent, or your mom in some way uh, just would pit you against your other siblings. Maybe for some of you, uh, it is a friend. You had a friend that you thought was a true friend and they asked for some money and you gave them some money and then over a period of time they said, oh yeah, I'm going to pay you back, I'm going to pay you back and they never did and so you've been carrying this bitterness towards them. Maybe for others of you, it's an ex-spouse. Once you got the divorce done, you become hateful and, and you're so critical and there's bitterness that you have towards them and what you don't realize, folks, is your bitterness towards them is not affecting them but it is poisoning your children that are around you. And maybe for, for some of you, what the issue is, is that you're actually bitter towards God. You prayed for something, you asked for something, you asked God to intervene in some way and he didn't. And so you've had a bitterness toward him. Or maybe for some of you, this is the thing, you're bitter to yourself. You did something, you said something, you acted some way in the past 
And you're like, I was so foolish, and I can't believe that I did that. And you've been carrying this bitterness for months or even years. So at the end of the celebration, what I'm going to do is give you an opportunity to pick a name, one name of a person that you've been bitter toward. So for the rest of our time, what I simply want to do is to answer one question that I think is the key around this whole area of bitterness. And the question is this, how do you kill the root of bitterness? How do you kill the root of bitterness? Well, let me give you a very simple sentence, but I'm telling you, to apply it to your life is going to be very difficult. In fact, it may be the hardest thing that any human being could ever, ever do. And here it is. The key to killing the root of bitterness is forgiveness. The key to killing the root of bitterness is one word. It's a one word answer, and that is forgiveness. Now, I realize that some of you have been hurt very, 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 very badly. Someone did something to you or to someone that you love in such a horrible way that you're like, I just don't think I could ever, ever forgive them. And I get that. And the thing that I've learned is that forgiveness, for folks, is not a point, but it's a process. Many times forgiveness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to be able to do that. And yet scripture challenges us to do so. Ephesians chapter 4 says this, get rid of all what? What's it say? What's the next word? Okay, give me your best bitter face. Go ahead, give it to me. Everybody on the stream do it as well. What's the word again? Get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of all bitterness. Now, what does bitterness lead to? Well, it leads to rage. So it says, go get rid of all of that. Next, get rid of all anger and get rid of brawling and get rid of slander along with every form of malice. Get rid of all of it. There is no room for it, Scripture says. And then verse 32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another doing what? What's the next word? Forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Get rid of all of this stuff, remove it all, move it out of the way, then forgive each other just as in Christ God forgave you. How do you kill the root of bitterness? You kill it with forgiveness. You kill it with forgiveness. But the reality is, is that for some of you, you're like, I just don't know. You've been hurt so badly. Or again, maybe it's not you, but someone that you love. And again, folks, what you need to remember is that forgiveness sometimes isn't a point. And when people say, oh, you got to forgive quickly. No, you don't. Sometimes you take a process to do that. Sometimes it takes a little longer to get through some of the pain. Because sometimes the pain is quite overwhelming. For example, I was reading a statistic this week that when it comes to sexual abuse, one out of every four, and it's close now to almost one out of every three women alive today will be sexually abused. And when I read that, I was just shocked because I think about my two young daughters and that the reality is statistically something could potentially happen to one or the other in this area. And when I think of that, folks, it sickens me. It ticks me off to think that way. And then when I look out at this auditorium and those of you in the balcony, those of you that are on the stream, one out of every four have probably dealt with this. It's like one, two, three, you. One, two, three, you. Folks, I simply want to acknowledge that there are some of you who have been touched or abused or betrayed, or abandoned, or maybe even something worse than all of that, or all of that combined. And in your heart right now, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I don't think I can do this. I don't even want to forgive what this person has done. I mean, I'm not even the point of wanting to forgive. And again, I understand, I understand that process. For others of you, again, maybe it's not you that it happened to, but it's someone that you love. And when you think of the pain and the hurt that was experienced to someone that was close to you, you're like, I'm not sure I can do that. I'm not sure I can do that at all. I mean, after what they did 
to me. After what they did to the person that I loved, I just don't know if I could ever forgive. Well, for some of you, this is what I've been praying for uh, over the last few days, is that there would be a supernatural miracle that would happen to some of your lives today. That for some of you, you might actually make the decision to go, you know what, I'm going to take that step. It might be a baby step, but I'm going to take a step. I may not be able to do it immediately, but I'm going to ask God to actually give me a desire of a heart to forgive. Maybe for some of you, that's the first step. Today, you're just going to make a choice to say, God, I'm open to it. I can't do it on my own. I need your help, but I'm willing to take a risk. For some of you in this process, again, forgiveness for you may be a process that takes place. It's not a point to forgive, but it's a process for you. It may be that you start doing some right things or you start asking God, you know, I know I'm supposed to pray for this person. I don't want to pray for them at all. But God, would you kind of give me a desire to at least think about it? That's that's all I can do. That's all I've got right now. For others of you, maybe your prayer sounds something like this. God, change my heart. Give me a desire to, to look more like you because I don't want to go down this path to forgive, but I I'm sensing that maybe you want me to take that chance. It it may be a process for you. Honestly, for me, that's what it was with the guy who was dating my sister. It was a process. Once I found out that he actually had put his hands on my sister, I hoped he died. I really did. And I had this bitterness towards him that I carried for years upon years. And then uh, my oldest daughter, Jordan, in preschool, she came home one day and she said, Hey, Dad, uh, I have to learn this uh, passage, Ephesians 4, 32. Would you help me? And to be honest, at first, I wasn't sure exactly uh, what that verse stated. And then we put it on a big board and it says this, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. And I started thinking, how did God forgive me? God forgave me entirely, fully, completely. That's how he forgave me. And he challenged me to forgive this guy. And because God has such a wonderful sense of humor, once I went down this road of forgiveness, and my dad did as well, there was a day in which we were at Walmart when we saw this guy. And... We had a conversation with him. No, I'm joking, we didn't. (laughs) But we had a conversation and there was this opportunity and we forgave him and he told us that he had come to Christ and he was going to church and, and we couldn't change, folks, what he did to my sister, but we could change our bitterness and to get rid of that and we could look different for what the future would be. And we let God change our future. Folks, I realize that for many of you, you've been hurt so badly, it's going to be a process like it was for me. It may take you years to forgive, but today's the day that you might say, God, I want to be open to it. I'm not sure I can do it on my own. I'm not sure I can even get to that point, but I'm asking for help for you to allow me to do that, even if it's a baby step. Now, You might say, well, Chris, why is this so important? I mean, they did me so wrong. Why is this so important? Why is it important to forgive? Well, Jesus said these words. He said, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Then look at what he went on to say. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will what? What's it say? Not forgive you. He will not forgive you. Folks, it's so serious. It's so important for you to take a step towards forgiveness today. Because the truth is this, folks. God is never going to ask you to forgive another person more than what he's already forgiven you. God will never ask you to forgive anybody more than what he's already forgiven you for. 
You know, when you forgive someone, what happens is you don't forget. They still hurt you. You shouldn't trust them at the same level anymore, but you let them off the hook. But what you find is that they weren't really the one who was a prisoner. You were. And when you forgive, the prisoner that gets set free is you. So this is how we're going to close today. I simply want you to remember that person who carried, who hurt you in some way and that you've been carrying your bitterness towards. Who is the person that you've been carrying bitterness towards? In your program uh, or on the app, there is a prayer and we're going to do this a little differently today. We're going to give you an opportunity to take that person's name and to put it in a prayer and to pray it just kind of silently. The prayer says this, it's in your program or it's on the app. Let's look at it together. God, I admit that I've allowed a root of bitterness to grow against whoever it is. Please forgive me of this sin. By your power, give me a heart of compassion and forgiveness toward the person. I realize to forgive does not mean to forget, but today I relinquish my bitterness. I ask you to give me wisdom to forgive and if possible, to restore my wounded relationship. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's how we're gonna close today. We're gonna give you a moment right now and we'll bring the lights down so that no one has to be looking at another person's page. For those of you that are on the stream, we wanna invite you to be a part of this as well. And to think of that person who you have had bitterness towards, and that maybe today you'd take a baby step to simply walk down forgiveness with them. So if you guys would, bring the lights down and for people to have a moment where you could write down and then quietly, just by yourself, to pray this prayer silently in your head, and then we'll close together. Let's pray. <clears throat> Loving God, this is some tough stuff that we're talking about today. This is the stuff of Christianity that is the greatest of challenges. And we thank you, God, for, for guiding us, for convicting us to take this step or to take maybe just an openness to consider. For some of you today, maybe you're bitter towards your dad or your mom, a brother, a sister, another family member, a friend, a coworker, a neighbor, your ex-spouse, somebody else that you're carrying bitterness toward. God, I pray right now that you would help people to make a choice today to say, I choose to forgive. Maybe your bitter root towards someone that hurt you is someone that you really, really loved. You, you gave so much of yourself to them. And today you could make the choice, I choose to forgive. God, would you bring your healing to each person who has been carrying some bitterness? Maybe it's small, maybe it's gigantic, but please God, bring your forgiveness in this place. And God, for some of the folks who are here today or for those of you that are on the stream and, and this is speaking to you today, I pray that whatever the hurt is, how badly it might be that you would at least take a step to say, God, would, 
would you at least give me an opportunity to open my heart? It may be a process, I'm not there yet, but to be open to it. I'm at the beginning, but I'm taking another step to you. God, give us a glimpse of how much you have forgiven us. And so that in your timing, in God's timing, you would give us the strength to extend forgiveness to those who have hurt us. Lord, help us today to do whatever we need to do to turn to your light, the light of Jesus Christ, so that we could live and look and be more in his kingdom than where we're at today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, maybe today, some of you, when I said some of you might be carrying a bitterness towards God, that's exactly where you're at today. You prayed for something, you asked for something, God didn't come through, and you've been carrying this bitterness towards him for a very, very long time. And you're like, I felt so bitter that now, even if I thought he would have anything to do with me, I, I've been too hearted. No, you, no, 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 no. God will take any hardened heart and turn to him, he can soften it. And so today is the day that you need to settle this. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. You don't know what the rest of the week is going to look like. And so today is the day that if you've been carrying a bitterness towards God, that you would seek forgiveness to say, God, I need you in my life. I need your forgiveness. I need your love. I need your grace. I need a brand new start. I want to know that I would be with you in heaven today. And so if that's you, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And it's not a prayer that you pray by yourself but it's one that we pray together in community. And if you feel comfortable doing so, I invite you to simply repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of forgiveness. Jesus, forgive me. Make me brand new. I believe you died and rose again so I could live with you. Fill me with your spirit so I could know you, serve you, and follow you for the rest of my life. My life is not my own. Today I give it to you. Thank you for new life. Now you have mine. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.